call is being recorded. Call is being recorded. If you are wanted by the FBI or the CIA, please. We're going to find you. Now. Press one. Please leave if you are wanted by the FBI, the CIA, or other. Or your local law enforcement jurisdiction. Law enforcement. Hello, everyone. Look at there's everyone. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yay. I turned on recording already. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, that's that's a great, great way we can Let start. Use old text. People Excellent. watch uh, recording. Yeah. They're going to be like, mm -hmm. oh, why were they telling people? Train. You not have to. Uh, you know, you be, that they were going to be recorded or, you know, caught by the FBI or CIA. Anyways. No, they're not going to be caught <laughs> at all. Keep their identity <laughs> secret. Secret identity. Yeah. Let's see. Mute Everyone's yourself. Everyone's under an <laughs> alias. <Wait. laughs> Amy, Here I just want to tell you. Yes. I, I just Instagrammed you a message about two books. I, I don't know if you picked you can't, don't have to look at them now, but heard a lot, but that's okay. I mean, that, it, not like my shirt. Right. Today. No, 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 no. I, they were, um, just uh, after about the conversation last week, it's these books on the organic artist and okay. earthen pigments on how to do make like paints and stuff. Okay. Well, I will check it out. Okay, um, I'll mute myself now. <laughs> I'm just letting everybody on in. Everybody's like, oh, $50 gift certificate for 50 episodes of Feedback Friday. I'm in. I'm going to RSVP for that. Did you guys even know that? I'm looking at your faces. If no. they didn't know, it's okay because as long as they're here, they're entered. Yes. Isn't oh. that exciting? I thought about this last night at 11.15. Mm -hmm. Right. This is how marketing works here. And then I promoted it. <laughs> and then I saw your email. And then I went back in to edit that we did, in fact, have a $50 gift certificate for today. Also, wow. we'll be sending out a survey soon to see. Are you guys tired of Feedback Fridays? Do you want us to keep having Feedback Fridays? We can actually create a poll in this. We're um, going to do that because if you guys aren't into it anymore, we're not going to do it. We're going to walk out and we're done. Okay, I bought it. <laughs> the woman of ultimatums, always yeah. these ultimatums. Also, yeah. if you if you guys quit doing Feedback Fridays, I'm going to be very upset. Okay. You should be fired, Amy, for that statement. As much as I love you. Fire her? Whoa. That's kind of strong, no? Well, she threatened Kathleen. She did threaten Leslie, didn't she? She's like that. She'll say, well, if you don't like me, I'm done with you. And you're like, <laughs> what? My Are you guys tired of Feedback Friday? No. No, no. No, no. no. no we we oh, love it. Happy. It's just. No, no. Uh, we're not tired of it. Okay. Yes. All right, Kale. Okay, Leslie. Leave it's okay, Leslie. Smile right. now. We're good. We're good. There you go. You. Take a breath. Also, um, I was going to say, I was going to just. Whose donkey is that? All right, everybody, can you mute, please? Mute yourselves, please. Here, I'm muting people who won't mute themselves. All right. How are we doing, Amy? Um, there's still a lot of people coming in. Again, I think it's the uh, $50 gift certificate incentive. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, uh, not the great Cara Marie Piazza? <laughs> oh, it's Cara Marie Piazza for sure. Um, okay. Yeah, really? Sure, sure, sure. 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 It's a little bit more enticing, but that's okay. All right. Um, I think we should... You want to let people in and I'll do the uh I will let people in. Feedback Friday soundtrack. Okay, everyone, get ready to dance. Dan, where are you? Oh, there she is. Okay. There she is. I wish I could get up and do that, but then I'm afraid something would happen and then I couldn't perform Feedback Friday. All right. Great. Here we go. Okay. Well, it's the end of the week. Now, where you been? Well, now it's Feedback Friday, so come on in. Tom 
sit down and stare at your screen. We've got a presenter that you never seen. We're Feedback Friday, we're on the loose. We'll be the train, you be the caboose. It's Feedback Friday with Kathy and Amy. Mashed potatoes and the gravy. It's Feedback Friday all day long. Feedback, Feedback, Feedback Friday. And good morning. Hello, everyone. It's Feedback Friday from Botanical Colors. And today, today is today. episode 50. 50. Oh, my God. We've been doing this 50 times. Dumb. 50 times. <laughs> Say that Duncan word. <laughs> uh, I, I think. OK, right. we're not going to do that. Anyway, <laughs> um, welcome to Feedback Friday. This is our weekly show where we speak with dyers, artists, activists, scientists, writers, scholars, historians, growers about our favorite, 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 all time favorite topic, which is natural dyes and color. And I'm Kathy Hattori, president of Botanical Colors, and joining me is Amy Dufo our Director of Communications and Sustainability. And today we have a special guest who's from her new hangout in Brooklyn, Cara Marie Piazza. But before we start, I just wanna send out a huge thank you. Helping us get to 50, <laughs> keeping us going during this really weird hybrid time where we kind of have almost, but then it's getting worse. So I still want you to be super careful. Um, those very uh, contagious variants are out there. Keep your masks on where you need to. Um, you know, if you got vaccines available, those are a great idea. And let's get through this. Um, for some housekeeping, Amy's our moderator and she'll monitor the chat on this call which is where you will post questions after our presentation today. And I just wanna say, we've done this 50 flipping times and I still have to use one of these in order to get through the line by line um, dialogue of what I'm supposed to be saying. But okay, I'm getting better every time. I think by a hundred, maybe I'll even have it memorized. Um, so many of you do know Cara Marie Piazza. She is what we call the high priestess of bundle dyeing. She don't spit out your water. Um, she is based out of Brooklyn, New York, and has done just some, I, I think what I really love about Cara is that she's absolutely fearless, where, you know, I was trained by pretty um, rigid uh, methods. And so when I do natural dyeing, I'm very methodical, but Kara is just like, yes, I'm putting the jam on the t-shirt. Let's see what happens. So I think we're going to have a really great presentation today. Um, looking forward to it. And um, Kara, you can tell us all about what you've been doing. And her, her subject today is ice dyeing, which is a really weird concept. I just can't wait to hear all about it. Take it away, Kara Marie Piazza. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, that's wow. That Feedback Friday intro song. Whoa. This is some good stuff. I'm ex I feel like amped. I'm ready to go. I'm seeing everyone's smiling faces. We have dancing. TGIF, thank you for all being here. This is really exciting. Um, I, you know, I, I would like to say that I am fearless with natural dyes, but Kathy, I think that also being methodical, there is something to that as well, if you are going to be professional. So I think there's like a, ha there's like a happy medium between the two of us somewhere in here, but you know what I mean? Um, I think that's why we have so much fun together because I'm always like so startled, like you did what? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to throw all of that really expensive logwood into the tie I think right now. Are you sure? Like maybe, I don't know. Or I, I think she also insinuated you put jam on clothes. So I do make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches out of my design. So that is a fact. Um, 
So today I am going to be talking about a really fun technique called ice dyeing that I actually just modified from a, like a traditional tie dye technique that happened that, you know, has been circulating the internet and I saw people using writ dye for it. And I was like, this is silly. We could totally do this with natural dyes. Like let's have fun, let's experiment. So um, I have two classes where I, um, teach you how to ice dye with everything from snow, bodega ice, making your own ice cubes, and then of course, botanical colors, extracts, mordants, and modifiers. So I am just gonna launch into my um, presentation now, and then everyone can kind of hop in and ask me questions um, afterwards. Can everyone see my screen here? Yes? Okay, great, I'm getting thumbs up, awesome. So that's me, Carmen Piazza, hello. As you can tell, I'm a nice good Italian American girl. Um, and this is our ice dyeing presentation for the day. Um, this is, I, I work, I'll explain a little bit about myself. I work with designers, artists, I'm an interior designers, uh, basically to act as a small scale natural dye house. So I do everything from like high end custom pieces to like very small um, production. So that's like anything from like two to 300 pieces at a time. Um, here's an example of my, you can head over to my website afterwards to check out some of my work. Um, all right, so launching into the ice dye. It's pretty simple. You just have to get the, get the materials right for it. So you can do everything from working with ice that you find at the bodega. If it's snowing where you live, you can scoop up the snow or you can get creative and get molds to actually make the ice yourself. So here, oh, these are the tools that you guys are going to need. We have ice, snow. Here's a little example of how I worked with some snow um, there. Those are all botanical colors pigments. Um, oh, here, I'll play this little video so you can kind of see a time lapse of it happening. I also work with um, fresh, and I not fresh, I work with frozen fresh flowers too. When you freeze um, flowers, once they um, melt, they actually create this very beautiful kind of, uh, watercolor like effect on the fabric. So um, that's why you can see all the frozen rose petals on the um, ice we have here. Um, it is important to mordant your fiber beforehand. That's where it differs from the synthetic dyeing with um, like the RIT dye. So you do have to make sure that your fabric is pre-treated beforehand. So we use aluminum sulfate for silk or aluminum acetate for cotton. Always be mindful that when you're working with these powders, please wear your dust mask. And then it's the standard rule of about 5% um, aluminum acetate for the cotton. And then uh, I say between around like 10 for silk, I would say. Is that good, Amy? I'm getting a nod. That's usually what I do. And Kathy, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and these are, sorry, I pulled um, images off botanicalcolors.com. I hope you know why. <laughs> um, and then we work with the pigments. So here's the fun part. So here we have the natural extracts from botanical colors. Um, I recommend working, honestly, you can kind of work with anything. So there's logwood, cabracho rojo, um, matter extract, the marigold is really, really beautiful. Any of the extracts you can play with here, you can do it in two different ways where you either freeze the extract into the ice cube or you can sprinkle them around the ice in the snow. And the reason why we're using the ice is because once the ice melts, it creates these very beautiful, and I'm gonna show you guys examples of um, the different patterns it can create, but it, it causes the, you know, with natural dyes, I think we find that when we sometimes when we take ourselves out of the equation, like we get some of the most beautiful results. So the fun thing about ice dyeing is you can just set up your station, your little ice station. And then as you go, you just forget about it. So it's like the perfect thing to do at night. You just set them all up, you fall asleep, and then in the morning you get this beautiful um, result. You also, I also play with modifiers. So um, what those are, they're pH modifiers or working with metals. So on my ice dyes, I'll either squeeze lemon, citric acid, soda ash, and that also interacts with the pigment to change the color. Now, if you don't want to spend a lot of money by buying a bunch of different extracts, what I would recommend is using one natural dye extract and then sprinkling the modifiers all around your ice dye. So that's everything I just said. <laughs> um, so you guys want to take notes, that'll all be there. 
So the sodium carbonate is alkaline, the citric acid or lemons are a high acid, and the iron and ferrous sulfate is a metal, which does what we call saddening the dye and saddening the color around where um, uh, the pigments are hitting the fabric. I would recommend, um, I haven't tried, someone asked me this in one of my classes, if I've tried experimenting with like using rusted objects. I haven't, but I wouldn't see why that wouldn't also work instead of sprinkling the powder. I, I'm sure you would get the same effect because the acid is gonna interact with the rust on the nails or washers or whatever it is that you've rusted and probably stain the fabric too. So if anyone experiments with that, tag Kathy and Amy, yeah, because we would love to see how that works. I definitely think you'll get a cool result from doing that. Um, so that's something to be to think about too during the process. Um, you can work with ice molds. So these are all silicon trays with my messy hands that I have here. So I put um, herbs and uh, like dried uh, herbs like flower, like safflower and rose into my ice molds. They also make extremely beautiful objects afterwards. So the water in the um, ice be wets all the little dye stuff and then it helps it leak out. So you can kind of, you can get, like Kathy said, I'm a little bit like folk method with my, with my experiments. So like, I don't want to say that I know the exact science of the way that the color is going to come out, but like, why not take some of your dye steps from an exhausted dye bath and make ice cubes out of it? You know, this is a great way to like work with the you also can make ice cubes out of your old dye baths too. So if you don't have enough, like if you're not making the extra lake pigments or you don't know what to do with it, freeze it, put it in a, in a, in a um, even like a small little Tupperware containers can make ice cubes. So you can get creative with how you make your ice. Um, and the shape also helps affect the like way that the water um, melts and kind of flows throughout your fabric. I would say that, um, you, there, you can either work on your fabric dry or you can work on it wet. If you work on it dry, it's gonna look a little bit more tie-dye and crystalline. If you work on it wet, it's gonna be a little bit more flowy, if that makes sense. Here are my frozen flowers. So as you can see on this picture, we have some frozen ranunculus, some frozen roses, um, all mixed with uh, the different pigments. Also, I, I find ranunculus actually is like a really great flower to freeze because when you, it like really leaks the color out. Also, um, scabiosa or like pincushion flowers are really great to freeze too. Um, and what's funky about them is after they freeze, they kind of turn this, when the fabric is more dented with aluminum, um, this is silk on here right now, when it's uh, more dented with aluminum sulfate, they go kind of like teal colored. They, if the, if the flower's purple. So it makes this very beautiful kind of like tealy tone. Um, you might not be able to see, but I have just placed my fabric in a rusted bucket. So the vessel that you hold your fabric in will also affect the color, right? So if you work with like a copper pot or an aluminum pot or something that's rusty, that's going to interact with the flowers and the dye pigments and change the color too. Because um, uh, the metal is going to seep into the color and like play with the different uh, tones that you have going on there. Um, more materials that you need to start your projects. Oh, wait, did I mess up? Okay, yeah. Um, you need a pot or a receptacle to catch the dye in. If you put this on a table and you just put ice on, you're going to make an absolute mess. So you just want to make sure that you have like a tub or you can just do it in a pot, a strainer or grate. Um, to lay your fabric on top of. Now, I talk about this in my classes online, but um, the more peaks and valleys you create with your fabric, the more variety you're going to have. So if the fabric is flat, you're not really going to see much uh, difference in tonality, but the more you can kind of make donuts or mountains or layers, um, the more like dynamic results you're going you're gonna to get on your, on your fiber. You can get creative um, with tie dye. So I'll show you some examples of like ice dyeing with tie dye uh, techniques too. So that would mean, you know, just pretty much doing like regular tie dye or resist techniques on the fabric before you place it under the ice and um, 
the pigment, you can also get some pretty cool results that way. Definitely wear gloves, always wear a mask, and then your fabrics. So like all natural dyes, we can only do it on natural fiber. Um, like I mentioned before, you just more dance appropriately to the um, fabric that you're using. So silk, more than the way you more than silk, cotton the way you more than cotton. This technique doesn't work if you're not if the fabric isn't more dented, but that's with all natural dyes. So just make sure that you go through the same process of more denting your fiber. I would say you don't necessarily need the scouring step because we're creating like funky, crazy patterns on the fabric. We're not trying to go for a solid effect. So you can skip the water and skip the material for that. Um, uh, and that, yeah, you can do this on t-shirts, you can do this on your masks, you can do this on scarves, on old, you know, this is just like, I mean, it works with all, all uh, different fabrics. Here are some examples of the frozen ice cubes. So, um, yeah, so you can see that in here I froze the safflower, I froze a little bit of logwood pigment, there's some rose in there, and then I just let them melt onto the fabric. And the other thing is like, sometimes it might come out a little bit too light, that's fine, you can just keep keep adding to it until you get the desired result um, uh, that you're looking for. I also experimented with um, um, freezing the modifiers too. So you can play with different sizes of your ice cubes um, by freezing citric acid in one, soda ash in another, iron in another. I think the only thing I would be mindful of is that the powder white, you might be hard to remember what's what. So I would maybe keep a tray, like label a tray of each. That way you know what you did. I, um, again, if you're just experimenting and having fun, you can mix them, but I would keep just just for your own notes and and um, record keeping keeping the tray separate can help you catch your bearings of uh, what it is that you were doing. And in this here, I was dyeing silk wool. I had my silk masks. I had like a mix of fat. You can do different fabric at the same time too. You don't it doesn't have to have to be like only silk on one of your buckets and then only. Um, cotton on another. It's just as long as they're all mordant and you could dye them all at the same time for the, for the um, during your project. Here's some more up close shots of the frozen petals. So you can see they're all, it's kind of just like leaking out and melting all over um, the fiber here. Um, this is an example of what it looked like after I rinsed it. Um, after you have melted all of your fabric, you're gonna want, not your fabric, your ice cubes, you're going to want to rinse in um, lukewarm to cold water and just make sure you kind of bleed out all the excess dye. And then um, I would let it dry naturally um, and then iron it on a hot setting, kind of like the same rules as bundle dyeing. You just wanna make sure that you're um, bleeding out all of the excess color because it can, it does fade dramatically afterwards. Um, so that initial like bright shock of color that you might see, like don't be afraid if it becomes a little bit more subtle. Um, I think that uh, you just wanna make sure that you bleed everything out that you can so that way you're not disappointed when it goes eventually in the wash and you see the color fade again. So just make sure you hand wash the most, mo the majority of the color out before you um, uh, potentially sell it to someone else. I always say that with every, <laughs> with all the things that I do. Um, here are some examples we have of the ice dyeing. So this um, here on the left is on a crepe de chine. You can see like all of the waves and like the peaks and valleys and the the white um coming out through the um poking out through the logwood so this was done with logwood a tiny bit of marigold extract iron citric acid and soda ash and it was let to sit overnight and it was an example of something i actually made um during a class and you can see it came out like quite dynamic it was very like there's a lot of movement in it. Um, these are some scarves that I dyed. The ring I made by tying it um, here on the bottom, I made by like tying it kind of in a tie dye fashion. So I like pinched it, made rubber bands around it. And then everywhere that the iron hit turned into that like dark, those like dark black marks around it. 
Um, uh, the shirt on the left is an example of it on cotton. So you can see that it um, it's a little bit more pale and like faded, but it still looks quite cool, you know? So it's this is a mix of matter, ranunculus, um, a little bit of the marigold powder, um, and then all of the different additives as well. And it, there's still a lot of white space too. So it, it has um, varying levels. And then the right is silk wool, is a silk wool scarf, and then a silk shirt mousse um, uh, mask. These are examples of the tie dye. So as you can see, there's kind of like a ring around the middle. Um, and that was all, yeah, pinched like in a donut, tied, um, uh, tied in rings, kind of like uh, just as if I was tying rings and had pinched. Can you guys see my hands? I don't know, <laughs> but like there's also that. And then same with the, the piece on the right. Um, and then here, I'll just play these little videos so you can see some live examples. And then this is also, oh, I missed it. And the reason why the one on the right kind of looks like a Rorschach is because it was folded. So you can also get experimental with the way that you fold your fabric and leave it underneath the ice. Um, here we go. And then here's another video piece that came out a lot more subtle, but like still quite beautiful, just so you can see the difference between the notes. Um, and then these are all on cotton. So these are, um, the one on the right was done with matter. And then the one on the, sorry, the one on the left was, I can't, I don't know my left and my right. Um, the left is matter. And then the right is um, a mix of the logwood, the iron, a little bit of a natto seed actually. And natto works really well with this technique too. And they all kind of mix with each other and make all these pretty kind of like binged rusty um, marks and tones. And then these are more of the silk masks. And that's my presentation. Do you guys have any questions? I'm happy to answer anything you need to know. <laughs> Um, there's going to be a million questions. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't you stop the share? And, yes, um, doing that right now. Do you have water nearby? Yes. Good. You're going to need it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, buddy. And let me open the chat. But we'll start with everyone. Okay. So the chat's open. And Cara, we're going to start with some questions that came in uh, through email first, but you guys start putting those. Oh, no. See the numbers are going to start ticking up. All right. Let me put you on. Let me just spotlight you too. Hurry, Amy. Hurry. I'm trying my best, Kathy. Okay. Issy from Australia asks, because I've only had experience with hot dyeing, and this is a cold method, what pigments or dye stuff do you recommend to experiment with, Cara Marie Piazza, Brooklyn? <laughs> so we definitely want to work with pigment that's really potent. The one pigment I will say, because I do get asked this question a lot, is indigo does not work with this technique. Indigo needs to be fermented, so do not use indigo. You're going to waste your indigo. Avoid the indigo. You also weirdly want to work with pigments that are, are um, highly reacted to different modifiers, right? So like logwood is great in the sense that like it's not great if you dye something and you get an armpit stain, it's going to go you know, orange, but for a technique like this, it's actually great because we can work with the modifiers and the acids. So botanical colors has like an amazing extensive lift of different extracts. So anything that's like potent and then reacts to different modifiers, I think work really well. So that's the marigolds, logwood, matter, um, I would say any of the cabracho, fustic, weld, I mean, weld's really expensive, but you know, you can cochineal, the list is kind of extensive, so it's really dependent on like the color that you want in your in your ice deck. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Erica Lebetsky asked this question. I feel like you answered this one, which was for different fibers using alum sulfate or alum acetate as the mordant. But if you want to go add anything to that, I mean, it's just like regular dyeing that. 
Yeah. yeah. So you mordant your fiber the way that you would mordant your fiber for any, like any sort of uh, natural dyeing, right? So it's just, you just have to make sure that you work when you're working with cotton, you're going to work with aluminum acetate if you want the really big, like a very bright um, uh, colors. And then with this uh, aluminum sulfate on the silk. Or you can also work with a tannin mordant and that could also act as a color too. If you're mixing it with iron, it's gonna make, um, depending on the tannin you use, you're gonna get everything from like a light cool gray to like a mauvey purple navy, depending on the tannin that you're working with. Okay. In Virginia asked, uh, she wanted to hear more about if there's a special way to disperse the extract before bundling. And I think you were talking about if it's wet, it'll be more of a, it'll disperse better. Yeah. You know? That's really, that question is really dependent on um, like your own aesthetic, I would say. Like if you're looking for more of like a pigment sprinkle bomb, I don't know if that's like a technical term. <laughs> <laughs> a sprinkle bomb. Um, uh, it, I think it's, it's kind of down to like the, the concentration of the amount of dye that you use. And then if the fabric is wet or dry, like dry is gonna, you might like lose a bit more pigment actually because the fabric wasn't wet to absorb it. And then um, with the ice dyeing technique, you're gonna get more pointil pointillated, pointillated, you get what I'm saying? Speckly marks with the pigment rather than the ice cube because the ice cube is, is water, it's dye and it's gonna leak into the fabric whereas the pigment is just gonna kind of create little speckly flats. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one from the emails. Crushed ice or snow, does, does crushed ice or snow work better than ice cubes? Again, there's no better. I don't, I, I don't believe in better. I believe in what your aesthetic preferences are, right? So the crushed ice is going to melt in a different, at a different melting speed than the ice cubes are because it's not condensed I really should take a physics class or a chemistry class but like it's just based on the way that the ice is melting and then how much pigment is trapped in the ice and where the water is melting that creates the different flow so um you know if you want to determine what better is good for you I would set up three separate experiments one with the ice cubes one with the crushed ice one with a mix to see if you can catch a difference. You might not catch a difference between all three or you might get drastically different results, but I think that's also down to experimentation. So, you know, if you wanna choose what like fits in your aesthetic palette, I would recommend always setting up smaller little experiments where each one is just like a little bit different so you can see the, the measured results afterwards. Nice, that's good advice. Okay, let's see. Do you ever use this technique on linen or wool? I haven't done it on wool yet. Um, I've done a silk wool blend, but I haven't done it on like proper wool or yarn. I'll be completely transparent. I'm not the best yarn dyer. <laughs> it's not my thing. So I don't really, I haven't really experimented in that way. If anyone else has, please send me your results because I would love to see it. Like we're all teaching each other here with some of these. So it'd be really great to see that. Um, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't work on wool. The only thing is wool will most likely need to be scoured beforehand because the land, like the oils on it might just repel the dye seeing as though it's not hot. So I would say that you could have some different issues in that department. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. Can you use fresh flowers or do they need to be frozen? I just don't know how the dye of the fresh flower will get onto the fabric if it's not, if something hasn't been done to it, if that makes sense. Like you might need to like massacrate the leaves for some of the color to come out of it. Like, yeah, yeah you can sprinkle them on there, but I just can't, mm -hmm. I don't think anything is going to, like, I don't think it's going to transfer onto your fabric without it being placed in some sort of water or like substrate, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yep. Have you ever, or have you ever tried putting rusty bits in the bundle? Of the, for the ice dye? I haven't, which I think I said in the, in the, in the presentation, but I wouldn't see why it wouldn't work. I did use a rusted tub, which did change the color of the, the, the piece. So I think it would be cool to test and try. So 
send me your I know Samantha Verone is here today too, who does all the rust dyeing. So Samantha, if you've done that, put it in the chat. Yeah, please. I think it would be awesome. Samantha Verone, put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. So when you make your ice cubes, do you pour hot water over the dye material or do you just use tap water? Just good old fashioned New York City tap water. <laughs> Green point tap. Okay. When you fold the fabric, where do you place the dye stuffs and ice? To get that um, your fabric is, so the way that I do it is I fill like a colander, like so the green, I think a couple of people asked this question and I should have been a little bit more clear is you just need something to like catch the ice and then let it stream straight through. So like the same way you do a bundle dye setup, you could just use something like this. This is like a typical salad colander or, oh my God, no, it's my hair. Um, <laughs> I fill it with ice, sandwich my fabric in there, sprinkle a little bit of the pigment, more ice, more fabric, more pigment. Now, if you want to do larger fabric, like larger pieces, you can get like a, a grill grate or some sort of top, um, like a mat, like some, just something mesh to like catch all of the dye under in a, in a, in a plastic bucket. Okay, I'm sure somebody probably just put at the bottom of this list, uh, do you then use that water that's underneath that? You should, because why not? Why not? You could probably also make it into a pigment. Exactly. About that after pigment class with Natalie. Okay, how long do you leave the fabric under the ice? Until it melts. Okay. So usually that takes about 24 hours. Depending on how hot your house is, maybe? That's not how hot your house is. If you live in Greenpoint and it's winter, your house is hot. Yeah. <laughs> but the radiators are brutal. <laughs> you want to leave it, you want to, it's like kind of the rule with all natural dyes, the longer you leave it, the more it's going to, like the longer it's going to last. So it's just like, you know, be mindful that you don't want to sit there with a blow dryer on it. Just kind of let it do it. <laughs> Not to mention that's electricity near it. Okay. Did you make those silk masks and are they easy to breathe through? I did make those silk masks. They are easy to breathe through in the winter. They are double layer and a little bit obnoxious in the summer. I'm not going to lie. It's very hot, but they're double layer. And I would say that with the new variants and the double masking, you should be double masking. I don't make CDC regulations are different from fashion masks. So I will, I will say that. Okay. Have you tried this technique on paper? No. Why not? I maybe, whoa, I feel like cotty cotton paper would be great because it's like thick, you know, and it's also made out of recycled cotton. So that like a cotty cotton paper kind of looks like this. Um, <clears throat> so it's got kind of like, it's quite, it's got that like, it's got a tooth, pardon my disgusting indigo nails, but it's got like a tooth on it. So I feel like something, try it. I'm going to try it today. Great idea. Do it. Do it. Great idea. <laughs> butter and jelly on it too like Kathy says to do. Yeah, <laughs> okay I think you answered this one already about sprinkling the dye on top of the ice or the ice snow or underneath you were saying making layers with it mm -hmm. okay and where do you get your blank shirts Cara Marie Piazza that's a fabulous question so that shirt was actually a shirt that I think you should all um look into this foundation it's not actually it wasn't blank I didn't I should have showed the other side but um it's from a, a foundation called the Aura Foundation and Liz Ricketts who runs the the program um is working with the secondhand markets in Accra, Ghana to like tackle and like talk about all of the insane secondhand waste that our country decides to dump on their shores. So that is an amazing foundation and resource to look into. Um, there's a company also called Everybody World that makes really cool blank recycled cotton t-shirts. And then also a place called SOS Organics down in Texas that makes, um, homegrown and color grown cotton blanks if you're looking into that too. All right, I will add all that into the video post, all these different yeah. places. I'll get Liz's um, site from you. And also of course, Goodwill. Yes, a thrifting, $4, just go $4 a Goodwill, there's always so many guys t-shirts, white Hanes t-shirts. Yes, absolutely. 
okay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you manage to get good coverage on both sides of a pre-made garment like a t-shirt? Um, that's a good question. I think that, um, like I was saying, you kind of like creating the peaks and valleys on the piece um, or like scrunching it up like you're tie dyeing it and sandwiching it in like under the dye and on the pigment helps it hit the whole garment. So it's a little bit different than bundling because when you bundle, you roll but we're not doing that here. Um, I think it's more about trapping it within, within all of the snow and the ice. Okay. Have you ever re-ice dyed if you aren't happy with the first outcome? Oh yeah, all those scarves that are on my website, I dyed like three times. <laughs> Absolutely, fully. I like that Samantha Verone puts, hi Cara, what did you say about rusty nails with ice cubes in the beginning? <laughs> I missed it. Yeah, I mean, Try it. <laughs> Let's all try it together. Well, we gotta just uh, Samantha. All of us have to just throw some rusty objects and some ice, and definitely mark it. Do not use these for drinks. These no, orange peels or something. Yeah. Once your ice cube trays become your natural dye trays, they're your natural dye trays. So make them separate. We don't. Then you're gonna get a rude way. We just we keep our dye materials, our dye materials, and our kitchen materials, our kitchen materials. Just. Does that mean we have to get a separate fridge and freezer now too? Because whatever good my little one. <laughs> That's my little buddy over <laughs> Okay, have you ever heated or steam set the fabric after the ice melts to further bloom the colors? Yeah, I would say that you, you notice a little bit of variation in color shift afterwards. I definitely iron setting your work with all hand dye, like funky, applications because that really helps trap the color afterwards. Okay. Let's see. All right. Can you mordant after you've stitched as in shibori, leaving the stitching in? So mordant yeah. Yeah. Yes. To, to, to create a resist, you mean? I yeah. assume that yeah. 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 Okay. Let's see, what a fascinating technique. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Could you please explain a little bit more of the process so I can put a piece of fabric in a bucket, then randomly put ice cubes on the fabric and let them melt. Is it really this easy? I just added that last line. <laughs> it's, um, it's well, you do have to add the pigment and you have to add the flowers and you do have to, you gotta like get a little creative with it, but yes. All right. Great. So, okay. Uh, thank you for sharing. Love your work. What has been your favorite designer collab and what was your largest production run? Maybe, you know, how about those two t-shirts that you showed in your presentation? Were those, those ones? Are, those are just there for myself. Ah, okay. Yeah, those, those are my own things. But um, I think my favorite collab that I've done thus far is actually just about to launch with Mara Hoffman. Mm -hmm. um, it was, <laughs> thanks Amy and Kathy, they really, they, um, we dyed 164 pieces. Um, Mara's doing a really incredible um, new program where she's, um, has like Mara Hoffman Renew. So it's kind of like Eileen Fisher, like it's, she's really doing a lot of amazing work and like really talking about how fashion needs to be more toward a like um, move more toward a circular economy right so she makes a really great point that like people are not going to stop making clothes so as designers who have been in the industry for 10 something plus years how do they start reimagining their take back programs so this that was really something like I think I did like we died a lot of her past inventory these weren't new clothes these were all pieces that she wanted to upcycle and give a new life to which was really exciting um, so those will be coming out, I think, in about two weeks, maybe a little bit sooner. I'm not sure. I think it's like an Earth Day launch. Or everything, you know, you know how this stuff goes, though. I'm not sure. yeah. But that was an awesome project. That was not the most pieces I've ever done. 1,000 units of panties was the most that I handled <laughs> in a week. We handled 1,000 panties in a week. And you like bundle died 1,000? Bundle died 1,000 panties in a week, yeah. Rock and roll panties. That's the new hashtag. Yeah, that's the most I've done to date. Of, and then I think, I think maybe like 300 pieces of some, what was the hat that I do? I think it's like, 
oh no, remember that? We won't talk about it. Never mind. I had a bad, I, never mind. Okay, next question. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, how do you determine the amount of dye matter to put into your ice cube mixture? Random? Random. Random. I, dye matter random. As much as you can pack in there because it's like an ice cube, you know what I mean? So I think in that, also like be mindful of your budget requirements. I know that sometimes like as we were talking, like because I get a little bit, you know, woo, loose with my hands. I end up wasting a lot of money. So don't do that. Like measure, measure your die out, how much you want to actually spend per project. Be mindful. Like natural dye should not get thrown away or wasted. So like do as I say, not as I do. I think it's very important that, you know, you don't want to like just get too crazy with it, but like, yeah, measure out how much you want to spend per project and then distribute it between the ice cube trays. Because it, with the pigment throwing, it can go, they can go really quickly. So I will just say that like, just try and be mindful of what you're, um, what you're putting into the project and how much you're actually getting out of it. Okay. Um, I, I kind of want to crack up with this question, but yeah. um, about putting ice in the blender with Oh, I know what she's saying. She's doing talking about indigo, uh, fresh leaf indigo. I'm imagining like all these dyes inside a blender. And then my, what my mom did recently, forgot to put the top on and it exploded all over the place, which be, would be a cool looking kitchen after. But so why do you think indigo would not work, says Renee? Um, if you're working with fresh leaf indigo, it might work. I just meant more like the, the pigment, like working with like the actual indigo extract because needs to be fermented. Um, it's not going to be fermented if you're just throwing it into an ice cube, but if you're working with like the fresh leaf um, and it's like extracting color that way, I'm sure you might be able to get a really beautiful like light blue or like a teal color. So it could just be a different application of the indigo. I would just say that if you're actually getting like the raw extract, don't use that because it's just going to crock and rub off and make a mess. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like, sorry, Renee, I see your thing now that, that was a typo. So we figured it out though. Okay, does the speed that the ice melts affect the results? Will the faster melting time in the summer create a less concentrated color? More, neither? I think that will require more experimenting to tell. I don't have enough information for you at this time for the answer, but I will say that making an educated guess based on the way that natural dyes work and like having things last longer, like maybe a slower time will create a more longer lasting result. Okay. Like, There's so I, many questions at the end of that. Yeah. I think you're, what you mean is just try it. <laughs> okay let's we'll see all, we'll all compile our results next year we'll take the summer to test it and then we'll take the winter to test it and then we're all going to come back together and do our results together <laughs> okay so let me see how do you get your hair to look that amazing i'm only kidding i made that one up all right should ice dyed pieces only be washed cold everything should be washed cold I mean you definitely want to you want to you can be like lukewarm if you want to get the majority of the color out but like with anything that you like cold washing is just better for the environment anyway so um and it'll preserve the longevity of the garment too yeah can't oh have you ever or can you use seawater I have not used seawater. You can use seawater. It will change the color of the dye because there's a bunch of stuff in the sea that's in there. So yeah, freeze some sea cubes. See what happens. That might be cool. Why not? Yeah, why not? Try it. Do it. Own it. Do you remordant when you re-dye? No. You're supposed to take longer so I can find another question for you. Nope. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Everybody, I love that everybody just likes to talk with each other and on in the chat. Okay, so do onion skins work? Oh, huh, good question. I don't know. I don't, 
Hmm. The only thing about onion skins is they really do need an extraction. I know that they work in vinegar without heat, like onion skins when they're trapped in vinegar without heat or oxygen do make a transfer mark. I'm not sure about freezing them. Maybe if you froze them, I don't think vinegar freezes. Kathy, do you anyone in here? Is that chemistry chemist? Kathy? Kathy? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. It's got a pretty, it's, I mean, skin it's so work. much water. Yeah. Onion skins do work. With, in, in ice cubes. Um, I just put them directly on the ice. I've never frozen them in cubes. They take a long time. Like it has to be fully melted, but they make like yellow confetti. Sick. Whoa. Onion skins work. We love that. So saith Erica Lubetsky. Yes, Erica. <laughs> okay. Use your other skins. <laughs> This one's next level here. Have you ever put the whole thing in a cooler to slow the process? Whoa. Mind blown. No, <laughs> I don't have a cooler, but let's try it. Do it. Do it. Streets of Brooklyn. <laughs> Who's got their Yeti? They're like putting her like $600. Yeah. That's a, that means a Brooklyn thing is to like naturally die in a Yeti would be like, just yeah. like, $600. They find a vintage, a vintage cooler in some cool shop for a lot of money. All right. Can you talk a little more about cochineal in ice dyeing hole and ground? I would, I would grind the cochineal before doing it. Definitely grind it up. And you want to make sure that you're like cattle, like getting all the dye out there. So don't just throw the whole beetle in and grind it. You can use a coffee grinder, but if you use a coffee grinder, that's now your cochineal. I just I always have to reiterate things like that. Get a mortar and pestle, um, but definitely make sure that the, the the beetles are ground. Oh my god! I just got to the bottom of the questions. What? Are you kidding me? No. Well, somebody had asked about those um, those panties that you dyed. Let me see. Oh, I dyed the panties with um, organic rose, safflower, and iron, and. I forgot the rest, but I'll go back and remember. Oh, what. Kirsten Zerbrig is saying that frozen seawater is great to work with. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Okay, uh, what did you say about linen? About how to use linen? You mordant linen. It's um, the same thing as the same way as cotton. So you mordant the way you'd mordant a, cell, a cellulose fiber, um, and let it rip. So linens are great. Like there's um, an amazing. Oh my God, what is? her name on Instagram. There are two amazing dyers on Instagram who took my class and then dyed like linen towels and linens and they were beautiful. I think they worked a lot with the iron but they came out really, 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 really nice. Wow. Um, and again, I will have in the video post about your your ice dyeing classes that you actually have mm -hmm. recorded and we were talking this morning about all the, the different dye materials that we have on our site that we can link to that are kind of preferred, your preferred materials for, for doing the ice dyeing. Oh, I saw you, so you see, him, but who are the dyers on Instagram? It is, let me just go here for you guys. It's, I think it's pretty handwoven, but I wanna make sure that I'm spelling it correctly. Nope. Oh God. Um, can I find, and Virginia Craft, yeah. Andrea Whalen made some beautiful ones afterwards. Virginia Craft Textiles with a K. Amy, I can put, pop these in for you. Yeah, do that. and then, or, or I can get them from you after and I'll yeah, have yeah, yeah. a link to them. Um, yeah. Perfect. And then. All right, can you dye roving alpaca? I wouldn't see why not. Just has to be more dented like wool. Well, I think I think it would be beautiful. I think actually roving would be really cool because it would get like, and then if you spin it, it'll have like really beautiful, cool results. Like it'll look really tie-dyed. I yeah, I think it would be amazing. Um, okay, good. You guys are all talking to each other about cochineal, red jello. Um oh, I see what how do you wash the panties? Hand wash, pH neutral soap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Have you ever used spirulina power, powder, power, <laughs> power? 
I haven't, no, but I, I, I wonder if, it, I don't know how substantive it is. Kathy, it's not, right? No, it's, it's expensive and put it in your smoothie type thing. Yeah, put it in your smoothie. It's you know? super fugitive because of the chlorophyll. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's a really cool color. It is a beautiful is color. <laughs> okay, oh, yes. Erica, Erica's back. Any flowers that you would expect to produce color that do not? Like that don't work? Um, I White guess ones? Yeah. Yeah, I would say Super like- Rose or something. Yeah, you know, also I, I, I would think, I think things that are very like dry and waxy might be tough with this one. Um, like I can't, I don't know if eucalyptus would actually like work well because it isn't, get, I mean, if onion skins work, maybe eucalyptus may work, but I feel like it needs a lot more to break down the color. Um, things that are like juicier and wetter, like roses and ranunculus and like any kind of fresh flower you take and in your hand makes like a mark on it, I'm gonna say is gonna do great. Anything that like really takes, like that you need the heat or you need um, an acid to take the color out of might be a waste with ice dye. I love that Kathy Green, who's in Colorado is gonna go look in the shade of trees for snow now. Um, okay, what is your preferred pH neutral soap? Oh, good, 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 good question. Um, I have a couple. The laundress is like very expensive, but it smells delicious and it's like very nice. Um, there's also, I mean, like eCover is like pretty fine. Um, it's just like fine. It's like very, it's like standard, but it's like a pretty pH neutral base too. Um, my friend makes this like really fancy. I'm gonna show you guys. This one's super fancy, but it's like shaker rose water soap. Ooh. And it's by oh. this company Shark Tooth. Mine's really dirty right now, but it smells like oh. I'm sure, you can make it yourself. Mm. That's the link for that. So who doesn't yeah, want? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Virginia said this is glycerin soap. Okay, give me the give me the link for that one after. I will afterwards. Yeah. Right. If you're Canadian, you can also find snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Kathy, do you want to? Um, do you Tara want to Marie, as always, amazing. Thank you so much. That yeah. was like, ah, now, you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Not like I have any time, but I'm going to do this. No, our snow is gone. There is no snow here. I mean, if I go to Mount Rainier, I suppose. But thank you very, very much. That was incredible. Um, we're going to car hang out for a bit because Amy's got a presentation, a, a quickie as well. But I'm just going to talk about a few reminders. And also um, next week, our presenter. Um, here we go. So um, we just launched a new workshop with um, Natalie Stopka, who was a presenter a few weeks back on how to look at your used dye baths and random pots of, of dye that you don't have quite enough to do anything with um, in making lake pigments. So we've teamed up to create um, a lake pigment class that includes uh, all sorts of stuff that you're gonna be getting from us. We're gonna figure out how to do lake pigments. We're gonna strain them. And then the next day, she's gonna show you how to use them. We're gonna try split lake dyeing um, which I've only done once. So this is going to be really fun. And so join us for that. That'll be, uh, it's coming up. It's May 1st and 2nd, Saturday, Sunday. Um, also, we still have Abu Bakar's classes open for indigo, mineral mud dyeing, um, Dogon style uh, stitch resist, which is an extremely specialized type of stitching on very heavy handwoven fabric as well as his two construction classes on how to make one of his beautiful tunics or make a pair of trousers. So if you can join us for that, we have both um, installment plan payments as well as scholarships open for those, for his workshops. Um, we're clearing out the seeds. It's spring guys, this stuff has got to get into the ground and 
I don't want indigo seeds sitting on my shelf. I want them in your gardens making blue. So if you have any, any idea that you might want to do some indigo dyeing with fresh leaf, now's the time to buy them. Uh, and then we also put fustic on sale. So fustic is a tropical um, uh, yellow dye and we, are, yeah, we got a barrel of it. Not, not a bucket, not a gallon, a barrel. So take, that's also. Oh, Clara, Clara said she'll take it. Okay, great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 400 pounds. So <laughs> yeah, she loves it. Yeah, it's a beautiful color and it's, it's really interesting in that it shifts to a buff color if it's um, got strong st sun exposure. So you can do really weird resist change things with it. It's kind of fun. I'm gonna talk about next week, episode 51, we're gonna be welcoming Jennifer Steverson, a multidis multidisciplinary artist, independent scholar and writer based in Austin, Texas. The agricultural and craft traditions of black American culture is the heart of her practice. Jennifer's a descendant of the Great Migration and draws inspiration from her family's tradition of nomadness and from the skills, materials, pl and plants that they carried with them throughout their journeys across continents and also oceans. So this is going to be amazing. Uh, we really hope you can join us. Uh, Amy will have the RSVP up uh, so you can link to that and register. And now what it's picture of the week the week 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 car we're gonna get reverb so we're gonna get even better at this okay yeah. so let me share my screen so here we have picture of the week doesn't it make you feel so happy looking at it a little wildfire water so jessica has a full-time job, so she could not join us, but she told me to tell you that this happy picture was made using a tannin bath and she used a gallo, the gallo nut tannin that we sell, and then Coreopsis from her own garden, but look at that. And why we also, Kathy and I liked this picture was because it's Earth Month and we want you to start saving water and being better natural dyers. So, what a great inspiration for you to use clotheslines and, you know, keep your color in as long as you can, let them dry, give it a wash. And if you go to the header image on our site right now and you click on it, you'll see 10 ways that you can be a better natural dyer and keep carbon in the ground. So that is this week's picture of the week, 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 week. week. Oh, so cool. Yeah, look I really at that. I love it. It's such Don't you beautiful. Right now and just yeah. run around outside. I mean, it w might be frightening for the neighbors, but <laughs> they'll get over it. <laughs> they'll get over it. It's Coreopsis. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Amy, for that picture of the week. Kara, thank you so much. It was fabulous to see you again. I'm glad to see you're healthy and happy. Thank of course, guys. everybody who joined us for Feedback Friday, thank you so much. A Amy, we got to get for a uh, year, what is it, season two, episode two. We should have like our outro theme music. All right, hold on just a moment. Well, you just joined us for Feedback Friday. Now get the heck out because we're going to get the heck out too. And it's Feedback Friday. And yeah. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Start natural. Right. Yeah. Get to your dye pots, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week for week 51 of Feedback Friday. And Amy hangs out um, with people, and me, I run away. Runs away. Thank you. All right. We can unmute and say goodbye, everyone. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a ton. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Anna. Oh, bye. nice scarf. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye, Bye, Marika. Bye. It was wonderful.